What's up, everybody? My name is Anil. Going to a brand new episode of Twenty Dollar Tech. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Buffalo Classic USB Gamepad, which is a Super Nintendo USB gamepad for the PC and Mac. So I actually got this thing for four bucks, but you can pick these up from anywhere between fifteen, ten, fifteen bucks if you're wanting to get a high quality one. If you can get this one in particular, I, you know what? I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to leave that for the review. You guys can make the decision on your own if you want to purchase this thing or not. Anyways, it's kind of on the surface. Yes, it is. it has been written on with permanent marker because of the retailer that I got this from. It was from a flea market and, you know, I just kind of found it. But this guy, I guess he didn't realize the permanent marker didn't come off. I heard from the person at the desk that he does not speak English whatsoever. And then he actually has to bring in his daughter for her to translate everything. So, you know, it seems a little shady, but every single thing that I bought from his booth works perfectly fine. The mic I bought from his booth, I actually had a headset that I bought from the booth. There's a lot of stuff around my, in my room that I actually bought from that booth, and everything works perfectly fine. So, if you if you do live in the area, if you know what I'm talking about, that flea market, definitely go give this, um, it's uh, number 1982 that booth in there definitely do give it a look anyways i got this thing for four bucks it was kind of hanging up and it was actually being tied up by its cord I'm sorry i just kind of dropped that it was in no bag whatsoever but it is from buffalo it is product bsg b my bad bsg p801 s dash n basically all that type of stuff Anyways, it looks like a Super Famicom controller, and actually controls like one. It's got its D-pad, which has a four-pin, uh, four-pad, uh, D-pad on it. It can move all eight directions, although it does take a little bit of time for it to register both of the directions being hit at the exact same time. It has a turbo button and a, and a clear turbo button, so basically if you're holding down a button you hit turbo, it'll make it go really, really fast. But if you hit clear on that, if you're holding down the button and hit clear, it'll take off turbo mode. Um, you got your A, B, X, and Ys, you got your L and Rs, you got your start and select, it's literally a Super Nintendo controller with a USB backend. For a proper comparison, here's an actual Super Nintendo controller that I got with my Super Nintendo back in the day. Um, as you guys know, it's like the actual Super Nintendo. You got your D-pad, your start and select, your A, B, X, and Ys. It's almost night and day. Of course, you have the buttons. The only real difference, and it's not even a big one, other than the turbo buttons and the color of the buttons, the L and R are kind of swapped. So, on the Super Nintendo controller, when you hold it at a profile shot and you look up at the top of the controller, you can see L and R facing towards you upright. However, on the Buffalo one, if you're holding it and you did it at a profile, L and R are upside down. Not that it matters, it really doesn't, but that's what I'm saying. The major difference between this is, of course, that the Buffalo controller has a USB backend and the Super Nintendo controller has their weird 7-pin connector that they used uh, back when the Super Nintendo was still kind of a thing. But, uh, yeah, other than that, this thing controls just like a Super Nintendo controller, and I'm going to go ahead and get to some gameplay and basically show you guys what this thing can do. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into the gameplay. Note, I do not condone pirating games whatsoever. The three games that I'm going to be reviewing during this playtest, I actually do own the cartridges of. Super Mario World, Mortal Kombat 2, and Link to the Past. And all of these are fully functioning Super Nintendo, con Super Nintendo cartridges. I have done it in the past, and I know we all have. Pirating games is not really the best thing to do. You can do it, and you won't get, like, you know, you won't get shot over it. But definitely, I do not condone pirating games. If you're going to play a game, buy it. But the thing is, if it's at a ludicrous price, like say you want to play Earthbound, and Earthbound is currently going for like 200 bucks, other than on the virtual console, you know, you can you can kind of use emulators on that one. But, you know, this is just kind of a disclaimer thing. I do not pir I do not condone pirating games. If you want to play an emulator, it's basically just a way for you to play games that you do own on your computer, and basically in an easier format. Uh, just a little disclaimer, I know I still do it, and, you know, I will continue to do it probably for the rest of my days, but, you know, who cares? It's just, just a little disclaimer I had to put in the video. If you're going to use an emulator, at least try to stay in the realm of the games that you actually do own or, or have owned at one point. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get right back into the gameplay. Alright, let's fire it up. So the first game I'll be uh, playtesting is Super Mario World, and as I did show, I have the actual the physical copy of this game and this is all just for review purposes so 
right now, just starting up the game, this feels like a genuine Super Nintendo controller. Sorry, I had to cook off something. This feels like a genuine Super Nintendo controller that all buttons are like hitting the contacts perfectly fine. I actually had another Super Nintendo joypad before this, which was the Hyperkin. Uh, the Hyperkin 8-bit joypad. This, this joypad, and I'm gonna, um, hold on, I'm actually gonna put my webcam full screen for one quick second. I probably shouldn't have done that. Hold on. Dun, 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 video editing during the video. This joypad, do not buy this joypad. I had, it was fine for a while, but after a while playing, um, after a while of playing uh, Earthbound with it and other games, I started to feel like I was pushing the button too far into the controller, where the edges of the shell, where the buttons are, were, was actually stabbing my hand, and just the rigid edges, because it's trying to look like an it's trying to look like an 8-bit thing. The rigid the rigid edges on here will start to hurt your hand after a while, and that's why I bought this one instead, which is actually kind of funny, because I bought this thing for seven bucks, but I thought that this thing for four, exact same seller, exact same vendor, exact same, you know, kind of booth, but this, if you're going to get anything, do not get the Hyperkin, it looks cool, and it may sound cool, and, pro and you know, kind of like concept, but it is not a good joypad whatsoever you have to push the buttons down into the shell and farther to actually get them to you know kind of do something so obviously that is not a good thing for any controller and this is not a good product to kind of substitute any other type of joypad i'm done rambling and you know we're gonna go ahead and get right back to the gameplay because that's not what, that's what I, that's what i know you guys came here for and kind of the review on the joypad itself so we're gonna fire back up Sorry about that little tangent right there. We're gonna go ahead and go to Yoshi's Island 2. We're gonna fire it up, and we're gonna see exactly. We're gonna see. That was me. I didn't. There's nothing wrong with the emulation. That is completely me. Everything feels fine. Everything feels great. Just a complaint of real Super Nintendo, and it feels it feels amazing. By the way, I might be streaming here um, fairly soon. If you guys want to see me stream any Super Nintendo games, you know, just let me know. And uh, yeah, like I said, I do not condone not condone pirating games i have a very very limited selection of games if i do not have it then i'll of course have to emulate it but i mean like of course i'll have to kind of pirate it but you know a little bit of pirating is not a bad thing and i'm actually up here <laughs> i'll grab yoshi back but yeah this feels like an actual uh turbo controller not, not like an actual turbo controller an actual super nintendo controller speaking of turbo i'm gonna go ahead and hit b for my jump and i'm gonna go turn on turbo and as you can see just holding it does that but i'm gonna go ahead and hit clear real fast and it stops it just like that clean and simple don't have to set up any anything in any external menus and everything just works perfectly fine it's all on the interface of the controller and there you go everything works perfectly fine all the buttons feel like actual super nintendo, super nintendo controller buttons and the turbo works perfectly fine so to kind of get a better feel on how turbo works and how eight directions work with this thing i'm gonna go and fire up another game that i happen to own as well which is mortal kombat 2 so I'm going to go ahead and fire that up as well. So we are going to go ahead and test out the turbo and the eight directions that you can actually move in this. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to fire it up real fast. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest. I suck at Mortal Kombat. But, you know, we're going to try our absolute best to here. When I play this on the actual Super Nintendo, I can't beat anybody. Literally. So I'm going to go ahead and put my punch. My punch is, what's my punch? Hold on. There we go. Putting that on turbo. If I can even get off a hit. Like I said, I cannot kill anybody when I play this game. I literally cannot kill anybody. My girlfriend even kicked my ass at this game, and she plays as Baraka, and, she, and she's pretty good at Mortal Kombat, I'm not gonna lie. But, um, eight directions, you know, I'm gonna jump back. That works fine. Jump forward, that works fine. I, of course, ducking works fine, but you can't really, like, you can't really show off the, uh, the downward directions and yes I know you can change the difficulty but I'm not gonna do that and well yeah I got completely boned quite literally got completely boned but you know I had a feeling that that was gonna happen so I actually got a third game up here which is linked to the past to kind of show off the eight directions and everything and uh, yeah you know we're going to hop right into it and once again, I'm going to show you guys off. I'm going to show off the turbo, show off the eight directional, uh, the eight direction pad, 
And uh, yeah, when if you do install SNES 9X, do not map, do not map the uh, the four directions. I'm down Hill, downhill. I'm Doe Hill. Screw it. <laughs> Just for video. But yeah, um, this will actually help out a lot for games like this because you can just put it on turbo. And you put that on turbo as well. Just hold, the, hold those two buttons. Boom. Skips through every single bit of dialogue. And it's perfect because it actually works. But yeah. And it's logging up for some reason. It just kind of threw my cursor in there for a moment. I'm trying to get that. But yeah. You know. Classic opening to Link to the Past. But yeah. I'm going to go and jump out of bed. Um, down works fine. Up works fine. Left and right. And then, of course, the eight direct, um, the down right, up right, down left, up left. Everything works perfectly fine. The buttons work perfectly fine. I'm actually going to turn on turbo. Not if I mean I would have, if I didn't just completely throw that. But, uh, but yeah, as you can see, turbo. I don't think you can actually change the duration of the turbo. But as you guys can see, I'm I'm literally just holding the button. I'm not pressing it a whole bunch. And I just turn it off right there. Everything works on this controller like you would hope it would for a Super Nintendo controller, kind of like clone, or basically um, just a Super uh, Super Nintendo controller that you can play on PC and Mac. I do not have a Mac to test this thing out. I do know it works on Windows because, of course, I have a Windows PC. I do not have a Mac, so I do not know if this works like it does here on Mac or not. So, And I've not played a lot of Link to, Link to the Past. I just, I just knew that this game had four 8-direction... Uh, gamepad, 8 direction d-pad like movement and stuff, so you know I decided to install it and I happen to own it as well, so, I actually own two copies of it, I owned uh, I don't know, I'll have to I'll have to find the cartridge, uh, I actually owned two copies of it for some odd reason the, the label looked a bit different, so I'm guessing as a kid we thought it was a different game but, you know whatever, okay, so we're walking up to him take my sword <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to turn on Turbo. Ganon doesn't stand a chance. I'm just kidding. But anyways, that is it for the gameplay. Anyways, we're going to go right back into the full face cam. And we're going to go ahead and give you my final verdict. And whether or not I think you should purchase this controller or not. Let's get right into it. So in conclusion, what is my verdict on the Buffalo Classic USB Gamepad? or the Super Nintendo Controller by Buffalo. Honestly, I have really, really high... I have really, really high expectations for this thing, and it fulfilled all of them, if not more. The turbo buttons work perfectly. They just work so well. Honestly, if I had to compare this to anything, I'd compare it to the Wii U... the Wii U uh, gamepad, like the, the Controller Pro, like this part down here. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a turbo... Oh, it does have a turbo on there. Huh, what do you know? Anyways, the buttons felt just like that. I actually just bought that thing. Exact same vendor. Like I said, if you guys live in the area that I do, definitely go check it. Definitely do go check out that flea market and that booth. Uh, booth was 1982. Anyways, um, I just dropped the freaking controller. I'm so sorry. Professionalism, yeah. But anyways, um, I have really, really high expectations. And I have really, really high recommendation for this. Once again, I got it for four bucks. You guys can pick this up for anywhere around fifteen. 10, 15 bucks. Um, I would not spend any more than that. But as I said, it's kind of a PSA. Do not, and I mean literally, do not pick up the Hyperkin 8 bit uh, pixel art gamepad. Unless you get a higher quality one than I did. Uh, for some reason, mine just does not work the way it's supposed to. The D pad barely works. I have to like force it into the shell. The start and select buttons work perfectly fine, but you can hear the contacts. But listen to the ABX and Y. Can't hear that, can you? Exactly. Because it's not hitting the contact because the contact is so low down into the shell. However, on the Buffalo controller, perfectly fine. Like I said, do not pick up the Hyperkin, pick up the Buffalo, and I do completely recommend this. If you guys want to pick one up, there's a buy link down in the description below. It's through Amazon. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. On a scale from 1 to 10, I give this a 9. Yes, a 9 and not a 10, because a 10 would mean that this thing was absolutely flawless. As you guys saw, 
I was having a bit of trouble with, you know, getting it to configure to the emulator, but then again, I launched the ROM before I configured it to the emulator, and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, I do have one little flaw about this. The eight directions, they work, but they don't work all the time. So, during the Mortal Kombat, I don't know if you guys saw, but I tried to jump by pressing up, um, by, like, forward jumping, but I only up jumped. Once again, little itty bitty things that you will not be able to notice in a long, like a long game like as Legend of Zelda, you will not be able to notice it at all. But definitely for a game like Mortal Kombat, where you have to you know, like you know jump in specific directions to be able to dodge certain attacks, it is definitely a detrimental thing. I know you guys aren't going to be playing like like competitive or anything, but yeah. Anyways, that is my review on the Buffalo Classic USB Gamepad. Like I said, I give it a nine out of ten, and um, there is a buy link down in the description below. Anyway, guys, my name is Downhill. Thank you guys so much for watching $20 Tech, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.